In this video, I'm going to explain why we use a different labeling system between OJ peaks and photoelectron peaks. The fundamental reason why we have a different labeling system is that we need to describe the changes in state of an atom or an ion that leads to the emission of either a photoelectron or the emission of an OJ electron. The change of state to which I refer is the energy that is stored within the electrons that are associated with a nucleus that form the atom that is part of the solid state. That each electron configuration has its energy and if we remove an electron from the atom then there is a new system with a new energy and the transition from one to the other is what is creating the characteristic energies that we see for these photoelectron peaks and also the OJ peaks. To understand the OJ process we must start off by looking at the photoionization that results in a photoelectron peak. If we consider the photoionization of the copper 2p3 halves then this is achieved by creating a hole by virtue of scattering an electron by a photon in the 2p3 halves subshell of the atom stroke iron. So when we create a hole what we're doing is we are absorbing some of the energy of the photon. So the energy that we see in terms of the kinetic energy for a photoelectron peak is equal to the energy of the photon minus the binding energy that's required to remove the electron from the atom and then we also in terms of measurement there's the work function of the instrument that will also remove part of the kinetic energy that will also be true of the OJ peaks but this is essentially the relationship that converts the photon energy the binding energy of an atom to the kinetic energy that we observe in the data the reason we use the label copper 2p3 halves for a specific peak that is a photoelectron peak is related to the fact that we have created a hole in this shell of electrons and we can identify this hole by a set of quantum numbers and these are the principal quantum number the angular momentum quantum number and the total angular momentum quantum number for this particular shell so we're not really describing the electron itself by 2p3 halves, we're describing the hole that has been created within the iron that has been raised in energy due to the absorption of the photon. So we label our photoemission peaks using holes as opposed to the electron itself having some inherent property. And we apply the same principle to the labeling of OJ electrons. An OJ electron describes a set of initially a hole and then final holes that is to say we start off as the initial state for the OJ process as the atom minus an electron in a given state so the given state where the hole is is L3 hence we start the description of this OJ electron as L3 then from M4 as we see here M4 an electron drops from this energy level to fill this hole and this liberates energy and that energy could be emitted as an x-ray and in some way this is the reason that we use the LMM description is because this derives from x-ray spectroscopy so we have an x-ray potentially emitted with a given energy that is characteristic of dropping from an M4 to an L3 state However, the OJ process functions slightly differently. That when the electron drops from the M4 to the L3 state, then an electron is emitted with excess energy rather than emitting it in the form of an X-ray. And the binding energy of that state will reduce the amount of energy compared to the X-ray, but nevertheless, the electron leaves with a very characteristic energy that is dependent on the change in the configuration from an atom 
with a hole in the L3 state to an atom that has a hole in two states, M4 and M5, and the L3 is filled. So the OJ electron is described as L3, M4, M5. Describing an OJ electron as being L3, M4, M5 is very precise. However, when we come to real data, the precision is not really there to, to differentiate between different OJ features and the actual transitions that are responsible for these OJ lines. So we can generally describe a sequence of emissions or following this type of regime but slightly different initial and final states as copper LMM and then if we want to highlight other peaks with more precision we can say this is an L3 M45 M45 now the reason it's M45 is because we know that the M45 states are involved but we don't have the precision within our energy resolution to actually differentiate between all the different possible states that occur. So we tend to group together states by calling them M45. So M45 is equivalent to saying copper 3D. Instead of saying copper 3D three halves and copper 3D five halves as being the electrons involved in the OJ process. We can be as precise as we need to be, but we can also be less precise as is practical.